So, you look like me. How so, Lisa? Well, Lisa, you're strong way up, you're independent, self-sufficient, intelligent, single, proud and content. Rather like myself. Do you know something? I've always found it difficult to say single, proud and content in the same sentence. What? They just don't go together. Oh, I always thought you were happy within yourself. Happy? Happy is too much of a strong word. And as far as contented is concerned, the joy is still out on that one. I mean, behind all my fabulosity, my assertiveness, my tough as nails exterior, my swagger, <laughs> I really want that man. <laughs> I mean, six years is a long time to be about someone in your life, you know. God says, see, can you shall find? Well, I'm seeking, but I'm not finding. I mean, that is because sometimes you are better off without a man in your life. Trust. Yes, says she, who's got a man. It's all right for you to talk, you know, Janice. Because at the end of tonight, you're going home to a paradise and your bed that you could snuggle up to, even if it's not in his garden. Wait a minute, so are you saying that half a man is better than no man at all? She did not just go there and call my man half. Darling, as far as I'm concerned, any man who hits a woman is no man at all. Besides, I was being respectful to you by calling him half a man because you're my friend. You know I feel like your so-called man, Michael. I think you should get rid of him because you could do a lot better. Lisa, you're talking and you don't even have a man. I mean, look, Michael ain't no angel. And okay, I do have a few bruises. <laughs> but in all honesty, Lisa, you're abusing yourself with your job. You're always tired. You're not tired. And then on top of all of that, you work all the hours God said. So basically, you don't even have a life. I mean, most people, they work to live. You, you live to work. Actually, uh, when was the last time that she had a holiday? Okay, Lisa darling, when was the last time you had a holiday? Four years and three months. And the reason I know is because the two of us went together, come on, in any relationship. You have to take the rough with the smooth. But there is no smooth with Michael. It's all rough as far as I see. <laughs> Look, darling, all I'm saying is that you can do a lot better. That's all. Look, you two are always on each other, Paris. And to be quite honest with you, Shanice, as much as I don't like Michael, the pickings out there, Lisa, are slim to none. And you're healthy and healthy again. All right, all right. <laughs> Look, you know I meet quite a few guys, right? But the guys I meet always fall into one of these categories. <laughs> They're afraid of commitment, true. They have two or three baby mothers. Check, check. They can't handle the fact that I'm strong-willed, independent, and that I make more money than them. When they find out how much money I make, they want me to mind them. What? Yeah, they still leave the home with their mum, their gear, or their prison. I mean, listen, I'm not asking for much. I just want someone who will love me for me, someone who I can get married to, settle down with, have a 2.4 children in a white picket fence, and some more grandkids for my mum and dad to love. That's all. Wait, this eagerness to get hitched, is it for you or for your parents? Well, to be honest with you, it's a bit of both. You know, I'm from a big family, right? The other day we had a family gathering. All of a sudden I hear, Louisa! When you're getting married, look at you, you're getting old. She said, this is what she said, look, I want to wear me hat in that wedding, not in that casket. <laughs> Diana says, you can't hold in love. You just have to wait. <laughs> Diana, if it's to be, it will be. But you can't force it. You've got to let it come to you. Let it come to you? Yes. Yeah. Is that what you call Lisa by waiting for it to come to you? Is she the same Lisa who always says, well, you must be a go getter because nothing's just going to fall in your lap. Or is it only applied to the matters of your purse and not to the matters of your heart? Come on, you're trying to tell us your best friend for you. That you never think of what happened to man. Even if he was like Michael and half a man. Not really. You see, I decided a long time ago that maybe I never would get hitched due to my ambitious drive. So rather than moping about being single, I decided that I would celebrate my singles. Oh. You see, ladies, society and the media make you out to be some sort of model if you reach to your mid 30s and you're still single. Okay. I've no less than one because I'm single. Do you know I've been called all sorts of names? Like what? Yeah. Cold hearted, yeah. iron woman, frigid. <laughs> I've even had my sexuality called into question. Serious? <laughs> How can she have a poor man? Must be lesbian. Wow, sorry. No, no, darling. I'm thick skinned. That's how I've gotten so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must get it only from a little. Okay, but no earlier than half of my marriage. Alright, I think 
that, you know? Imagine being married and still lonely. Imagine having children and still being alone. You know what? I just came to realize that loneliness is a reality, whether you're inside or outside marriage. Now that's what I'm talking about. You see, Louise, if you're not contented and fulfilled as a single woman, you will not be contented and fulfilled as a married woman. Marriage isn't some kind of magic wand that you can wave and it'll make everything okay. And then, darling, some of the most miserable people I know are happily married. <laughs> Leave me alone, we are begging you, please. 